an, an unwritten goal is just a wish. Um, and accomplishments aren't achieved through dreams alone or through wishing alone. I want to welcome Angel Rosco to the Fit Team Show. Thank you. Wanted to have him on and share a little bit about his story and talk about some leadership and life lessons. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. So let's start, you know, where you grew up and uh, we'll start way, go way back. Okay. Well, I, um, I was born in El Paso, Texas, uh, raised there as well. Uh, both of my parents are from Mexico, from the northern part of Mexico. And so I had an opportunity to travel back and forth from the northern part of Mexico, spent some summers with uh, an uncle that had an apple uh, farm uh, in northern Mexico. And so we would go back and forth. Uh, and so my upbringing uh, was in Spanish. My main language is Spanish. And then when I turned six, I uh, went to school and started learning English. My first two teachers in kindergarten and first grade were African-American teachers. And so they didn't know any Spanish. I didn't know any English. And so right from the get-go, I, I had to really fend for myself and understand that if I needed to get somewhere, I needed to learn a new language. And that was difficult for me. Um, but I think that that placement in that particular situation helped me from a very small age understand that I needed to go above and beyond to be able to to communicate and to understand and be successful at least in those first two years and so from then on it was it was much easier um, but yes I've always been you know I think of myself as a very tall person and you know the big and stocky but in reality I'm really not I'm very short and you know very uh, petite body uh, and so did have uh, some bullying in life uh, at the beginning uh, but that also made me stronger and so that helped me compensate in other areas. And so I knew that I needed to be a little bit more social. I needed to work a little bit harder in my grades. And so I think that those things helped me right from the get-go as, uh, as I was growing up. What are, what's some hobbies that you had in, uh, up in, you know, early on and through high school? So I like music. So I play violin and I play piano. So I played uh, violin at, uh, so I, I went through um, uh, my early age. Uh, I started playing violin. I was with the uh, El Paso Youth Symphony. I was in the orchestra at uh, the high school. Uh, had state competitions and regional competitions, and uh, and then went on to play with the BYU Symphony. Uh, so that was fun. So I learned to play piano, uh, and uh, I love baseball. I love uh, basketball, and so played those sports as well. So those were some of my hobbies, and I like to read. I, I've always liked to understand what other people are thinking what made them I like biographies and understand why people are great and uh, have come to the conclusion that I think it the character is formed by many decisions made over time in a consistent way uh, to make you and form you in the way that you are and so I think that some of these things that I like to do like reading and sports and and music if you do it consistently uh, over time you will improve. Uh, a great um, cello player once said, uh, you know, what has made me become a great cello player is 1% uh, talent, 99% dedication. Mm. And so I translate that into business now and that yes, it takes a little bit of talent, but it really takes a lot of dedication and commitment and consistency. Absolutely. So after high school, what was next for you? So after high school, I went to a year uh, at Brigham Young University and uh, interrupted that for two years as I served an LDS mission in Mexico in Puebla, which is central Mexico. Uh, after that, I returned and uh, did, uh, I did my bachelor's degree in international relations with a Spanish minor. I went into business. We had a family business in, uh, in different areas and so went to do that for about 10 years. And uh, at that point in time, decided to do a master's degree. Uh, so I did uh, an executive MBA at Thunderbird, um, which is an international business school. And so I traveled to and from Arizona and Utah, where we were living at the time. And uh, it was fun. So for anyone looking to get started as an entrepreneur, obviously it's, it's a different path. It's, it's, it, it takes um, some different skill sets, some different mindset, beliefs. We'll get into some of those things in a second. Okay. But for someone that's thinking about 
they're, they're not happy maybe with, with their job or their current situation, they're, they're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, what's some initial advice you have for them? Being an entrepreneur is a leap of faith um, because there has to be stability um, for the family. And so it is a leap of faith. But I think that there comes a point where uh, you see that sometimes the path that you're on is a dead end or there isn't a lot of satisfaction. And it's not just the economics, but it also it is the fulfillment of am I really being able to do what I love passionately and that that is exerted from me. Um, and so that's what drives a lot of entrepreneurs is that they're very passionate or, you know, I put myself in, in, in that position and what drove me and it's the passion that I feel to improve the world in, in some way, shape or form to leave a legacy that is above and beyond just working, for example, at a job day in, day out, um, which is wonderful. And that's really good because you have fulfillment um, and you're providing uh, but others are, you know, that are thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, they want to leave a legacy behind in other areas. And so they may have a great idea or they may have a wonderful system or know-how mm -hmm. to applying to a certain idea. And so they want to make that and, and make an impact in the world. And so I think initially it's understanding what drives you, what you're passionate about, and then taking that leap of faith. What I would do if I were starting again is I would make sure that you know home is t provided for with a stability and income, and then I would start doing something in addition to that. So I wouldn't drop everything and go on after my big project, but I would do that. And so as I'm thinking about, for example, some of the things that we're doing here at Fit Team, um, I would add uh, add it on to my current job, and then start doing that two or three hours a day, every single day, consistency. Mm -hmm. Remember regularity. Um, so that then over time I'm able to replace my current income and do what I'm really passionate about. All right. You, you, you touched on so much there. <laughs> um, passion, making an impact, fulfillment, all just very important. Let's start with, I'm going to throw, throw a few different words out, but let's start with grateful. Okay. Um, I think it's important to wake up grateful for another day. And if you're grateful, you, you can have more. But if you're always complaining and always negative, and you know you, you can never have more because you always focus on the negative. So let's talk about you know have, being grateful. A great leader that I really admire says that great you know gratitude is one of the most important qualities that a person may have and can have. Um, first and foremost, I think that uh, we're guided. Uh, to do many of the things that we do on a day uh, on a daily basis and in, in order for us to be in a position where we can where we can notice others and notice opportunities uh, we have to be in a state of mind that allows us to receive those promptings if you will and gratitude I believe is the underlying a foundation for many of these things to occur. Um, when I'm grateful, for example, to somebody that set me up for an opportunity or that introduced me to somebody, um, then that makes a difference because I remember my roots. I remember where I came from. You know, I remember the sacrifices that my parents made for me to have an education or to provide for me. Um, I remember the sacrifices that my wife made for me, you know, in the early years as we were forming our family. And uh, I think that gratitude is very, very important. I'm grateful to you, for example, for bringing this wonderful opportunity to many Hispanic people. Uh, obesity and diabetes, for example, are number one and number two, um, if you will, diseases in, in, in Latin America and in specifically in Mexico. And, and um, you know, anyway, just finding a way that you can help people improve their lives or get out of their current situation is wonderful. So I'm actually grateful to you and thank you so much. Grateful to you as well. Mm -hmm. Next word I want to throw out is vision. Just having a vision, what you would like your life to look like. I think so many people, they don't even think about that. Mm -hmm. They just kind of, a lot of people just kind of go in the same circle and don't even visualize what they would like their life to look like. Talk about the importance of having a vision. For me, I, I 
I have a large family. I have seven children, and you're ranging from five to 20 now. And uh, one of those is a special needs. Um, one of my goals when I um, was growing up and as I married was that I wanted to have um, some time so that I could dedicate to my family and help them as they grew up. So everything that I did from, from the initial stages was with that frame of mind that I would have the opportunity to see my children grow up. And so for me, that vision of being able to be there and to provide for them in a, in a meaningful and honest way was very important to me. I think that as we set out uh, goals and properly align goals to our vision and our overall being of who we are, why we're doing the things that we're doing, and setting a critical path towards accomplishing that is part of an overall vision. And for me, that's really important because that helps me be uh, become who I want to become at the end of the day and to accomplish the things that I would like to accomplish. You already mentioned goals. Goals are so important. We always say, you know, make them specific, make them realistic, have a date attached when you want to uh, attain it or mm -hmm. achieve it by. As soon as you hit a goal, set another goal so, mm -hmm. you know, you keep moving forward. Um, anything else that you can mention on just the importance of having goals? Writing them down is you obviously know, important. An, an unwritten goal is just a wish. Um, and accomplishments aren't achieved through dreams alone or through wishing alone. It's important to dream, it's important to wish, but then you have to bring it down to uh, execution. And the only way that you can execute upon something is that you have a formal written down document, goal if you will, even if it's just a one line uh, statement saying, you know, I wanna do this, and then attach a date to it, saying, I would like to do this by such and such a date. And the next thing is a critical path. The critical path is just, what are the steps that I need to do to accomplish that goal? And then to have some intermittent dates so that that can help me accomplish the goal by the date. I think that that's really important. I think in business, we do that on a day in and day out. But I think that that needs to be translated into a personal um, way of life. I think that that needs to be embedded um, you know, I think about our Hispanic culture. Our Hispanic culture is normally very laid back. You know, we have a word that says mañana, mañana. And that's, you know, we'll get to it tomorrow. Um, you know, our culture, we used to sleep from two to four every day. Uh, you know, that's non-existent now because of the hustle and bustle of things. But I think that as we take care of the today, then the mañana will be taken care of. The tomorrow will be taken care of as we do things that we can take care of today. And any time you set goals, if you set big goals, it's going to take a, a shift in your mindset, personal development, working on yourself. Talk about the importance of, you know, continuing to work on your mindset, getting better, being around, you know, people are going to lift you up, reading, reading books, audios, podcasts, whatever it is. You know, last month um, you recommended a, a book, uh, Good to Great, uh, Mr. Collins. And he said among other things, uh, that successful businesses are that you have the proper people on the bus and that you place them, you know, in correct seats. Mm -hmm. And I have always said, always, that it's really more about the people that you associate yourself with mm -hmm. than really about even the opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, because those people will drive you, they will help you become better. You know, I've taken a look at, you know, a lot of the videos that testimonials say for example for Tiffy team for fit team and almost all of them in it say we attribute our success or we're very grateful to Chris Hummel for his support and his success I think that that's so important because it one underlies you, your capacity as a human being to help others and your interest in them but it also emphasizes the point that we need to relate to or we need to associate ourselves with people that have been successful in that particular industry for us to be successful. For people to drive you in ways that perhaps you're not being able to or are able to drive yourself into. The other thing is that you bring yourself with certain characteristics and humility and gratitude in your persona that I want to relate to and that I want to you know, have my people relate to and all of a sudden we're all in that 
same shift uh, or same mind uh, frame of mind. One of the things that attracted me to, to, to Fit Team, for example, I had the opportunity to come to that annual uh, conference that we convention in December. And I've been, you know, uh, had the opportunity to go to several of those in other places, uh, in other companies. But I saw something very unique that I had not seen anywhere else. And that was that culture, that humble, grateful culture that Fit Team has um, without any of the hype or without any of the bluff, I wanted to associate myself with. And so as you mentioned, you know, associating ourselves with others, I think that that's critical. Um, and the other important element of that is aligning yourself with those people that have a vision that will help you um, carry on your work. So as you extend that down to others that will follow you, you're, you're all aligned. I think that that's very important. It is. And you mentioned work. That's the next one. Hard work. That's something I, I, I take pride in myself mm -hmm. is I feel like I'm not very talented, mm -hmm. but I'll just work hard. I'll just <laughs> you're, work. You're very talented. And um, talk about the importance of hard work. As a Hispanic, um, normally we have a very strong work ethic. I mean, I take a look at the industry in the U.S., for example, the food industry or the restaurant business. I mean, most of the people that wash the dishes are going to be Hispanics. Most of the people that serve the food are going to be Hispanics. Most of the people that are going to be picking the crops that we eat are Hispanic. And so as a culture, um, we have a very strong work ethic. And I feel that um, I'm very grateful to my forebears for, for that work ethic because I think that there's no replacement. And like I said before, it is very important that you have capacity, that you have talent. That's important. It's very important that you have a vision of where you're going, that you have a critical path of how to get there. But if you don't work hard at it consistently every single day, then it doesn't matter how talented I am. You have to work consistently. I mean, take a look at, you know, the great, uh, you know, the sports stars, you know, like Michael Jordan. I mean, he was out there every single day shooting hoops, even after practice. Um, so I think that that's very, very important uh, for us to, to implement and then to help our children uh, to learn the value of, of work. Because at the end of the day, when there is a lack of, of, of a work ethic, then uh, other factors come in that will distract you and that will bring perhaps uh, habits that aren't very good and that will harm you. Something else I think that's, that's real important that goes along with working hard and the things we've been talking about is focus being laser focused on what it is you want to accomplish that maybe go back to goals setting you know your goals and you know your why something that's really pushing you but uh, talk about the importance of focus because sometimes you know there's a couple different things I want to say in focus some there's sometimes people just cannot focus at all they're doing 10 different things right. and then life and also the second part is life's always happening but some people are able to continue to focus through and every little thing that happens some people just get sidetracked in Spanish there's a saying that says El que mucho abarca, poco aprieta. Which means that he who involves or embarks in a whole lot of things is able to only obtain a small amount. So I think that we're, we need to ensure that we focus on that which we're passionate about and that we have uh, a clear path to how to set that out. Uh, for me, uh, I find that if I'm doing a whole lot of things, um, I'm not able to accomplish much. You know, sometimes as you know, I'm doing certain things. Um, I remember a story of, of, of a particular leader that I that I look up to, and he was reading the paper, and his boy was on his knees, and he was you know calling out to him, say, "Dad, dad, dad," and he said, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." You know, he pulled that newspaper down and said, "Dad, are you really there? Are you listening to me?" And it's, I think it's that way. I think we need to focus on that which is important and lay aside those things which aren't. There's a great book by uh, Stephen Covey called First Things First. And it tells us about the importance of understanding what our priorities are and then focusing on those priorities to be able to be successful and to achieve. Awesome. Consistency. 
one of the next things that's just so important to be consistent. You mentioned two, three hours a day for someone getting started and every day is so important just to be consistent because what you do consistently over time is going to be a lot more uh, successful than what you do once in a while, even if you do a lot of it right now and then take a month off. So talk, talk about the importance of consistency for an entrepreneur. So for example, at Fit Team, I see it as a moral obligation to have this product in the hands of many people because I see the effects of the product in, in their health. So it goes above and beyond just something that I see as an opportunity to make money. But it really is an obligation because I see that it will impact their lives health-wise. But that also it will, it will help them economically and give them financial stability and, and liberty at the end of the day. But as we become involved in something, that won't internalize until I do that consistently over a period of time. So if I don't do something regularly, day in, day out, then I will never really be able to live, breathe what I am preaching. Am I, am I being mm -hmm. clear with what I'm saying? It, I need to walk the talk. Mm -hmm. And in order for me to walk the talk, I mean, I can go out there and say, oh, yes, this is wonderful. But if I am not involved in it deeply on a day in and day out, then I don't have a moral authority to say, go out and do those things. Um, a medical um, practitioner uh, had a child that was brought to him one day. A, a mother uh, was having a hard time with his child that ate candy day in and day out. And she came in and she said, Doctor, will you help my child understand that he needs to stop eating candy? He sat back and he, he looked at the child and then he looked at the mom and said, please come back in two weeks. Can you do that for me? And she said, okay, I'll come back in two weeks. She came back in two weeks and he told the boy, you need to stop eating candy. So the boy stopped eating candy. She later then asked, doctor, why didn't you tell them that two weeks ago that he needed to stop eating candy? He said, because I was eating candy and I needed to stop eating candy. I needed to stop doing that if I needed to get by somebody to do that. So I think that as we understand the importance of consistency, then I will be able to understand that I live it, that I breathe it, and I'm able to call others to that consistency as well. That's great. Also, I, I, when you say what you just said, I think of leadership. And leadership is leading by example. Leadership is action. Leadership is influence. So anything else you want to touch on with leadership, that's it's so important. I think that liter leadership, in, in my mind, is synonymous with honesty and with ethics. Um, there are very many people that have great charisma, that have great relationships that will help them get to the top. But I think the mark of a true leader is somebody that is honest with self and honest with others that as he sees problems, that he will be able to call those problems out and adjust accordingly and will help others in his organization to do that. Being a great leader means taking difficult moments and being responsible for past mistakes because we all make them. I make them more often than not, but being responsible about them and recognizing them and then changing course. I think about leadership as somebody that has a responsibility to others to tell them and to guide them even when they're wrong and in a very polite, positive way, help them understand that they need to change. But I think that once we're honest with self and with others, then we're on, we're on track to be a great leader.